Did anyone here ever forget their keys? Lose your wallets? I did too, on more than one occasion. And I hate it. Now though, I carry it with me at all times. Most of it at least. Well, not as carrying, actually holding it, but actually installed inside my hand. The interesting part though, isn't how I installed it, rather the journey to this point. Um, it's kind of an unplanned journey that didn't only change the game in the technology field, but started creating a global community. A community where people using this are evolving everyday convenience. We can do easier travel. We can do faster and safer payment. We can do something as mundane as opening a door. I mean, the opportunities are endless. So this is a very short story about how I ended up here. And I want to give you a glimpse of the vision on how to keep growing this community. You see, as a kid, I was always in a everything sci-fi. Technology, role-playing games, video games, you name it. Being a fairly wild outdoors kid, I ended up with a lot of injuries. A lot. So I often wished I had these kind of superpowers, either indestructibility or self-healing, you name it. it it wasn't until I read an article about Kevin Warwick, though. He's got massive skills and knowledge in AI, robotics, uh, bioethics, you name it. My childhood memory and childhood dream kind of got rekindled. So I started looking into RFID and this type of technology that he used to open his door to the laboratory and to his office. And it didn't take long until we found actually implantable technology that we could use. So having my history in the piercing community, I've performed some 30,000 piercings and body modifications. Safety always comes first. So having that safety, this has given a profound sense of security for, for, for the community, since we always do things in the exact same way. Anyway, this technology is like you saw. It's everyday technology that you'd use with your phone. You get on the train, you get on the bus, you, you bleep uh, in the cash register to, to pay for your stuff. And all of that we can incorporate into this tiny microchip. And the big difference here is, you're not going to drop it, are you? <laughs> so doing this research, I got to know that I could do it on everyone. I would do it on myself anyway, for sure. But I wasn't alone. I had this one friend that kind of had the same ideas and ideologies like I did. So he was the lucky man to become superhuman by my hand for the first time. And, you know, being super excited about something, really want to do it quick, you want to change the world in an hour, we kind of forgot, as in, well, I totally forgot to do a functionality test. And <laughs> guess what? It didn't work. <laughs> However, I had my John Mnemonic moment. I felt like John Mnemonic. It was amazing. Uh, I programmed my implant with a call trigger that as soon as I tapped my phone to the chip, it called my wife. Now that's bonus points. <laughs> um, that's kind of when I realized that this was what the world's been missing all along, or at least I've been missing it, because we're filled up and packed with gadgets, doodads, wearables, and knickknacks, but they just take you that far, don't they? I mean, 
this was something else. Uh, basically, it gave me the opportunity to open up this entirely new discipline with my vast experience in body modification and this childhood passion, which merged and positioned itself in between the high-tech world and the business world. And that's always been off limits for me. I mean, look at me. It doesn't look like I have a PhD or work at MIT and produce implants for smart implant technology. But with that, having been brought up in the Pearson community and always wanting to share this, since if you do this in, in an open source community, it will develop faster. It will become better. It will become available for anyone instead of gating it and keeping it to those MIT and PhD dudes. With this community, which has grown pretty rapidly over the last years, we have managed to change logistics in even some of the biggest companies in Sweden. Swedish railways are now allowing biohacks implants as a ticket carrier. And that was in three months. That's huge. And that's the impact we can have on society changing by just doing new stuff. This, though, is biohacking. So what is, what is this? The word hacking, I mean, are you familiar with the news platform Lifehacker? Awesome, awesome, awesome platform. And there it is again, hacking. Hacker, hacking. You usually think about a hooded dude hacking your account, cyber criminals, but when you take a gadget and use it for something else and mix it with another thing to make a completely different thing, that's a hack, right? And that's what we're doing here, hacking. We're just taking, stripping away the word hacking from that cyberdyne hacker. And that's in every category. You got mainstream, and we got the extreme. These guys, uh, Tim Cannon and Sean Sarver from Greenhouse Wetware, are pioneering the design and implementation of, of larger implants. Um, they're grinders. And, and these are just for funs and giggles. They're LEDs that light up. Five LEDs light up if you put a magnet on them, which is 80s disco ultra deluxe. <laughs> um, however, imagine changing those lights into LEDs instead. Not LEDs, sorry, but sensors. So you get five different sensors on there instead, turning that into interpreter for your body. Neil Harbison created his own sense. He can't see color at all. So he created this, and this lets him hear color by vibration. So he can walk out the door and hear a symphony of color. That's also using biohacking. Or my personal hero, Elon Musk, with the Neuralink Corp, which will enable you to upload and download thoughts. And probably in the future, connect us with supercomputers protecting us from artificial intelligence. So the list just gets longer. Um, when you go into the medical arena, which we chose to stay parallel to because it's a jungle of bureaucracy and you don't want to go there. We've chosen to keep it simple. So we want to make it readily available for anyone. Anyone that wants it can use it, develop it, make it better, and keep it growing. Because if you don't keep it easy to get, amazing to have, and easy to get rid of, I think you're doing it wrong. The potential for this is amazing. I mean, five sensors are just making a seamless everyday interaction with their digital hyper-connected world. I could stand here for days. So I'm not stopping there, though, because just teaching my body how to speak machine just isn't enough. I really want my body to be able to speak to me. Tell me what's up. Hey, drink, buddy. 
get on the band, you better go biking, stop smoking, whatever. Or, or warn me, like, yeah, if you keep doing this, mm, it's going downhill. So together with the phone, which basically is a part of us already, we got a perfect match. Got everything we need. Impossible dreams has come true since the pyramids, right? And ours will too. But today, things are moving a lot faster. Because this is the digital renaissance. And this is the art. And I know you'd rather do fun stuff playing PlayStation or be out drinking beer in the sun rather than looking for keys. Thank you very much.